Oh, I mean, that was obviously a really high-level uh, Big Ten game tonight. Uh, congratulate Rutgers. Uh, they got a heck of a team. They're having a great season. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of Steve's and what he's done with this program. And, you know, his, his kids really made a lot of big plays down the stretch when, when they needed them. And you got to give a lot of credit to Gio. Um, I know coming off the injury, it's taken him a little time to kind of get his rhythm back. But when the game's on the line, he seems to... He seems to always come up with with big shots and, and big plays, and you know I was really proud of our guys. Thought we came into a, a, a very difficult environment um, and got off to a great start. Obviously made shots, executed, got a lead, and you know even as we were trying to withstand their runs, I thought we did some some good things with a lot of young kids out there uh, going through it for the first time. So a uh, really tough loss for us. Um, you know it's we've had about four or five of these in the last. Uh, over our last seven, eight games, and you know, it's it can go one of two ways. It either makes you tougher and you keep fighting, or you uh, you back down. And, and I know there's no there's no uh, lack of fight in our group, so we'll get back after it and, and get ready for the next one. Questions, Chris? What do you think ultimately turned the game in Rutgers' favor? Well, I mean, I thought Geo. You know, I mean, I thought his energy. They they you know, and, and I'm sure for him, he he's hasn't played to his level since the injury. And they know how talented he is. So when he started hitting some shots, um, you know, you could sense the energy, uh, you know, f with their team, not only with, with him, but I, I thought his his play really uplifted everybody. Um, you know, I thought they did a better job defensively in the second half. I thought in the first half we were we were executing pretty well. We were getting to our cuts. We were, you know, you, I thought we were getting into a really good rhythm. And I thought in the second half, I thought, you know, they – they turned up their pressure a little bit, got us off our spots, and um, you know made it a little bit more difficult for us on the offensive end. Anything else? Oh, uh, after going that eight minute stretch with only two field goals in the end of the second half, what was the message heading into the overtime period? And what happened? Well, just there was five minutes left. I mean, I, I thought you know we weren't really turning the ball over. You know, we were getting some shots, and you know, really sometimes. You know, late in the game, you just got to kind of step up and, and make a shot or make a play, and, and that's what Baker was doing. Um, you know, I thought we had some pretty good possessions during that time. You know, we were trying to, you know, get the ball into operating areas, not just not just settle for cranking long jump shots, but trying to drive the ball. And you got to credit their defense also. You know, it's not just what we weren't doing. I mean, they're a good defensive team. And they're a physical team. And, you know, I thought they really turned it up a notch, you know, in that last eight minutes on the defensive end, which made it hard for us. Chris, you inherited a similar program to Steve in the sense of Northwestern hadn't been to an NCAA tournament in a long time. What's he done in these four years that you've seen to be able to build up? Yeah, well, I mean, the first thing is he didn't sh take shortcuts. You know, he came in here. He's got his philosophy of how he wants to play, the kind of players he wants to recruit. Um, they've done a great job in, in evaluation. You know, you look out there, there's a lot of guys maybe – by the star rankings and all that, but they found guys that really fit how they want to play, and they've developed them. You know, they, they've done a great job with that, and and now they're getting uh, a lot of confidence. You know, it was kind of what I sensed it with us when we kind of did our build to get to the tournament. You, the the difference from hoping you're going to win versus believing you're going to win, and you see that in their kids' eyes. You know, they. They now, especially at home, because it's been such a good home court for they've built this up. And but I'm a big fan of what I've, I've always been. I mean, he's a terrific coach. He does it the right way. His kids play really hard, and um, you know he's he's done a great job building this program. Chris, your the team is very young, but you went toe to toe to Rucker. What does that say about your team going forward? Yeah, I mean I love where we're headed. You know, this anytime you're in, and probably some of you guys that have covered Rutgers, I mean you can. There were a lot of similar defeats like this. <laughs> You know, when, when they were very young and, and they were going through it. And sometimes when you're trying to build and you're playing a lot of young kids, you got to go through this part of it, which isn't fun. But sometimes it's necessary to get where you got to go because you find out where you got to dig down to. And I like our young talent. You know, I, I think, you know, we got a lot of young players that can be winning players in this conference. I like this group. And I just want them to stay the course. You know, this this is a difficult part, and and being in a year this year with the Big Ten where it's as good as ever. You know, so they're every night you coming out and play, you're playing NCAA tournament quality opponents. So we got to stay the course. We got to keep fighting. We got to keep it getting better. And I guess keep telling the guys, you keep getting to the doorstep. Keep getting to the doorstep, and eventually, 
eventually we're going to break that thing down and when we do hopefully that will lead to to some really good things thank you guys